Hi and welcome to the first video of this year. Uh, I thought I'd have a little look at this. I've got a loan of this just now. It's uh, an old PC basically, but it's not any PC. It's uh, one using an alpha processor. This was originally a digital machine, um, but they were bought over by Compaq and this was one of the last uh, of the kind of digital designs sold uh, under the Compaq label. So it run it's running VMS, um, although this machine can run NT or um, Unix. Um, but how we look inside? It screws at the back, and then the top cover slides off if the keys in the lock position and lock position. And once inside, uh, this machine originally didn't have a graphics card. Uh, I've added that in there. We have the floppy and CD drives here, and we've got a SCSI disk here. It's uh, it's not that big. Oh, size uh, nine gig, nine gigabyte SCSI there, and there's a second one here. Power supply below processor. So this is the Alpha processor. Okay, let's see if it comes to bits a bit further. Yeah, one of the things I didn't really like to get are these uh, cards that are on this riser here. This side frame has to come out, um, which again just kind of slides with the precision. These tend to fall out when you don't want them to come out, and then they uh, won't come out otherwise. So this is the uh, this is a graphics card I added. And there was only a certain amount of graphics cards would work with this machine. And this looks like scuzzy. Here. Interesting the Motherboard still has uh, devices marked digital. Okay, and this is the uh, non volatile RAM. These can be a bit problematic. That's uh, basically a battery built into the, the, the memory, and if they go flat, the whole module needs to be replaced. Um, you can cut them up, they're potted, but there's uh, the batteries inside, and unfortunately, I think it's quite hard to get these now. Okay, I've kind of stripped this down as far as I want to go right now. What I was looking for is evidence of the the, the digital over the compact. And I notice if you take the um, memory modules out on this top corner here, it's uh, reporting as a digital. Yeah, interesting. They, they even put uh, the word memory on that one to the uh, copper on that. Uh, see the serial number says EY, which is uh, means it was manufactured in Air in Ayrshire. In Scotland. Interesting on this riser card the the screen print says compact but underneath in the label it still says digital on the uh, copper as well. Uh, this is a very typical digital thing they used to put this what they call thieving in the copper uh, layers on the on the circuit boards. So I think I'll uh, put this together again and we can uh, Try and see if we can get it running. The board has two um, Ethernet connectors here, um, RJ45 type, and still the PS2 keyboards and mouse. And there are two serial ports at the back, uh, which we need to look at later as well. So two memory modules, and they like to put quite a lot of fans in the machine. There's like that's two. Uh, two fans at the front, one on the power supply and one on the processor. Just a quick look at the power supply, it's a 250 watt power supply. Um, sitting underneath the second SCSI here. It's 
processor. So it's back together again. Just one kind of point. The uh, processor on the heatsink here, uh, they tended to not put them on sockets or soldered onto the motherboard. Uh, this is one I'd removed from another machine. Uh, this one, I got Alpha processor, but in this case it's actually manufactured under license by Samsung. Uh, they were done that way latterly. So the, the Alpha processor at the time was the fastest uh, RISC processor available and uh, made the machines quite expensive and quite popular. So I'm going to try and run up this machine as it was intended. That would be a standalone without a graphics card, uh, which means you need to connect up a, a serial connection to uh, a dumb terminal, basically, which is real old school these days. One is that uh, you can't find a dumb terminal anymore, but you can get uh, the software for it on a laptop. Uh, the problem is that everything used the used to use serial connections with uh, RS-232 connectors, and uh, I had to make this one up. To, to fit this PC and um, you have to work out the connections which actually can take a bit of the time and uh, obviously the, the gender of the connector as well. So that has to go into the port 1 because only one port talks at, at boot up and we have to use a one of these kind of uh, serial to USB adapters which I can plug in. So it's quite quite a few bits, the links of the chain, if any of these don't work then you will not get anywhere with your computer. Okay, I've got my laptop here, I've got Putty running, which is just our terminal, and if I switch this on, uh, hopefully we can get somewhere with it. Yeah, as you see, I had the comms port in the wrong socket, it's supposed to be in one, one was at the top, strangely enough. But the second drive starting. And it says volume has improperly dismounted, rebuild in process, so it's now booting up properly once it does that. So I'm just going to shut it back down again and then boot it up on with the video card and see what it looks like. So if I shut it down. These old drives like to be shut down in an orderly fashion. There we go. So just ask a few questions. So I'll just let it do its shutdown process and then bring it back up again. Okay, I've got it connected now. So I've still got my terminal on the serial port and I've also got now a monitor onto the machine's uh, video card and I shall now bring up the machine again. It'll take it a little while, as I say, it's not the quickest of machines nowadays. I've put the covers back on and I've had to connect uh, a keyboard. So I've got an Nice digital one, and I've added a mouse so we can uh, try and get this working. Uh, you won't be able to enter any commands with the video without a keyboard. It's interesting. It's coming up here. It's testing the system on the, uh, on, the on the terminal. So we've already got things underway. Booting. Right. Alpha operating system. Open VMS as it's loading. Okay, we've got uh, video starting. It's quite comforting to have the terminal giving you what's going on, otherwise you'd have said the machine is hung, but it is it's still building. I'm just doing the last bit, and then it'll come up. That's uh, X terminal coming up here. Ah, right. Okay, we should be able to log in on this machine here.
it's all pretty pretty much their own version of Windows for this is on VMS looks very similar to the, the, the Unix ones as well Anyway, that was just to give you a, an overall view of the um, of the system uh, as it was. This, as I say, is very old. Oh, it says log out. So we'll log out from here. You mm. say HP because it's now compact, no longer either. It's HP. Oh. I thought we found that quite interesting. I thought it was worth looking at this mouse. Uh, of course, mice quite common is optical mice, but this one goes back to 1986-ish, and it doesn't have an optical. It has these two little rollers. At this time, uh, a ball mouse was normally the common thing. Uh, this was a particular type of mouse uh, developed by Jack Holly, and for all this is actually a digital uh, mouse. It has the 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 name Holly on it as well, uh, to do with the patents, I guess. So interesting, this is now totally obsolete, it was from uh, digital vax machines, uh, it was called a puck mouse, a nice three button mouse. So let's have a look inside. Okay, what I like about this mouse and the reason I kept it was it all clips together and you can just spring it apart. And inside you notice there are two rollers here that are at different angles. The interesting thing is the, the angle of these two rollers mean that depending whether it's moving in the kind of X way, only one wheel rotates. And if it's moving up and down, the other wheel rotates. And the previous one's stationary. And our optical devices are here. And these are loaded by little, little magnets that keep them in place. If I lift these off, the pad falls off. There's a little magnet and a plate underneath just to keep it in, in place. And you can see the the optical device here with an LED and a, a photodiode or phototransistor on one side. Uh, a little microcontroller running this, uh, a Zilog uh, CMOS 8-bit processor um, or microcontroller. Uh, so the outputs, it doesn't look as any UART, there seems to be basically three three connections that can be configured for uh, analog or digital inputs. Uh, so not compatible with uh, RS-232 or USB mice. And for all the connections, look like a PS2. The pin configuration is different and there's a key that stops them being used. So I don't think it's convertible. But it's just a really nice design, very, uh, as I say, quite old now uh, and was used in uh, deck workstations.